Thank you very much, uh, MEC Kretani Mashangu. Um, if I was here in my other uh, responsibility coming from where I'm deployed, Linda, President of the SRC, I would have also started my own revolutionary song. But now, Arriki Premier Kibo MEC. Um, and, and let's interact on that level. But let me acknowledge firstly the student community of UJ, um, the management of the university, and everybody who has appreciated the need for us to come and interact here. We've come here because we believe that part of what is important is to engage you at this level but also to get feedback from yourselves. And whilst understanding that uh, you are another sector whose responsibility squarely lies at uh, the doorstep of national government. In the spirit of cooperative governance, uh, we are working already with uh, our ministers of higher education as well as other departments at the national level to deal with issues that affect students at your level, but also as this province, we will also share with yourselves on things that we are doing that are not done anywhere in, in this country, but are an initiative of this provincial government. We, amongst other things, want to interact with yourselves on how Gauteng government has been working together with various other spheres of government, institutions, in improving the quality of education, promotion of access, and provision of uh, shelter for, for, for students in this province. As you may all be aware, I assume that for us in this province, that we have almost 400,000 students studying in institutions of higher learning, some of them not coming from our province, but uh, also having those that are coming from our own schools, in particular public schools in Gauteng. That out of these 400,000 uh, students, many of them are coming from disadvantaged communities. And they rely on public support with regard to them being able to further their studies. And as I'm going to be interacting with yourselves, you can tick on the issues that the president of uh, the SRC has spoken about on, on, so that then you can then appreciate that indeed some of the things may have not been in the public or media space, but already these are the things that we are dealing with. As a caring government, over the past 15 years, we came to realize that whilst we may promote no-fee schools at uh, lower primary and, and up to senior secondary uh, school level, the challenge still continues for those who go to institutions of higher learning. And from 2009, we then took a decision as this collective, and one of the advantages with this collective of uh, the Gauteng Provincial Government is that many of us are young people, many of us were your age, and many of us have gone through the very turbulences that you are going through. So our interventions are based on our own experiences, but also on the experiences of where we come from in our communities and in our families. We then opted to extend our support to learners who are coming from disadvantaged communities. And as we speak here today, the provincial government through the Gauteng City Region Academy has crowded in all bursaries that are within various departments so as to ensure that access to those bursaries is directed to those that are in dire need. And what we've then done, we've also put money that we budget for annually that then goes towards providing bursaries for learners who are coming from no-fee schools in Gauteng those who are the best performers from their schools. And what we do, we provide bursaries that include accommodation, transport, 
and many other things that may come out of the profile that would have been made against the learner. And as we speak now, Gauteng is investing up to now 250 million towards bursaries for learners who are going to institutions of higher learning, something that you can check with the Western Cape and many of our other provinces, it is not being done. We invest that money precisely because we believe that once this is not a responsibility of provincial government, we can't actually leave those who are disadvantaged again having to fend for themselves. And of interest, one of the things that we also provide is career guidance and advice so that then those who are given assistance by the Gauteng Provincial Government also understand the kind of skills that are needed for the economy of this particular province. So that then when opportunities arise, we are able to track you as a beneficiary, but then also be able to absorb you through our placement programs into the pri uh, private sector, but also within government. One of the key areas of the skills that we need in government, for example, it's in the area of accounting, of auditing, and in finance. And precisely because of that, we are already funding 230 learners out of our own programs, because these are the people that we can guarantee that there will be a need for a, what you call, a CFO, in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the provincial government, people who must be in the supply chain, people who must actually uh, be part of uh, the AG's office and so on. And, and we have identified that there was a scarcity of those kind of skills coming from our own disadvantaged communities. So our funding is also contributing towards the transformation of the public sector so that then our own can come in and take over strategic posts in the in the, in the public service. The other area that is quite important is in the area of economics. That indeed, we can't only have those that are coming from privileged communities and already we are funding not less than 115 of our own who come from disadvantaged communities with regard to them furthering their studies in the area of, uh, of, of economics. MEC Katani Matlangu is the MEC responsible for, for infrastructure development. MEC Vadi is responsible for public transport and roads. One other critical area where we want to make sure that we transform the public service and bring in fresh blood is in the area of professionals when it comes to the built environment. People who are involved in town planning, people who can be able to deal with engineering services and so on and almost 100 and, 101 learners have benefited out of our programs. It was 94, we have an additional number that has now come into our system, um, seven of them who are already in our placements, in, 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 in the public service, who are working with us in the areas where we deal with project management, project planning, project design, project evaluation and monitoring. So part of what we are doing as this provincial government is to not just provide bursaries for the sake of provision of bursaries, but we are also we are providing bursaries so that then there can be strategic intervention in the areas where the skills are needed. One other critical area that we have now taken as a priority, and we started this with MEC Matlangu before she moved to economic development, and, uh, and infrastructure development, that we need professional forensic social workers for us to deal with, cri with crimes that are related to domestic violence, to rape, to murder, and so forth. We are providing bursaries so that we can have forensic social workers. It can be a skill that is dependent on those who have been there in the previous dispensation and not have the capacity, and hence the delays in terms of dealing with crime crimes against women and children, including uh, crimes such as murder and other violent, uh, violent crimes. I'm just citing those ones because they are quite cru uh, crucial for us that we are providing support over and above what you get through NESFAS as the provincial government. Just this year, we were able to crowd in some of the sitters 
who also brought in their own resources. Because through the GCRA, we have now interacted with the Minister of Higher Education to say, let's bring everybody on site and let's make sure that we prioritize in terms of the needs of our own economy, in terms of the needs, in terms of social development, but also in terms of the needs for the transformation of the public service. So these are some of the things that we are actually uh, uh, dealing with. Because the economy of Houghton was highly dependent on mining, but we all know now that our economy is predominantly dependent on ICT, amongst others, and therefore you need people with expertise on that. On major economic infrastructure, we need people who will come in and manage such projects. And many other areas that, that are quite crucial for us, uh, freight and logistics, for example. That's one critical area that is quite important to drive the economy of this uh, uh, province, and, and that includes manufacturing. We've also, as, as, as the president had raised the issues around uh, uh, the area of accommodation and, and stuff, we believe in integrated uh, uh, human settlement development. And that's why, if you may recall, that just a few years ago, Next to Newtown, you, ne you did not have a residential area such as Brickfields, just behind Newtown towards Bramfontein. We also know just immediately after the Nelson Mandela Bridge in Bramfontein that through our inner city development, working together with the city of Johannesburg, we have started to provide. And I think I take the point, which is something that we have to look at MEC Kolisil and MEC Matang, on how best can we create integrated student villages without actually creating ghettos. Because that's one of the things that we must also guard against. We must create livable communities where there can be commercial sites, there can be site, uh, uh, sites or precinct for entertainment, there can be sites for access to information and so on. And that's why that development around Bramfontein has actually been one of the models of how best we want to deal with this. In Tswane, for example, we are working with the city of Tswane around the development of the uh, university uh, uh, village. And these are some of the things that we are dealing with. We have to then look at what do we do around areas such as Soweto. But I can tell you that even with the city of Johannesburg, there is work that is underway on the development of uh, further development of the Barra, Barra link because this area is part of what is called the Barra precinct. We have already started in the further west of, Johann, of, of Soweto with the development of uh, uh, Lufereni, a new township that is going to deliver more than 24,000 uh, 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 mixed houses. There is a new uh, Soweto um, amphitheater. There is a new hospital and major other developments. But this is but one of the other areas where even the Orlando Power area is going to be taken over and there will be further developments. <clears throat> and maybe we should listen to the, to the budget speech that's going to be delivered by Comrade Park Stau on, uh, on, on the budget of the city of Johannesburg because they will also be presenting that development of the Barra Link in this area as to how it is going to be developed to give integration of this particular facility against Krisani Paraguanath, but also with the residential areas of, uh, of Pimville, the residential areas of Deep Kloof, the residential areas of Orlando. So these are the things, because I think also what the President has spoken about, the issues of transport, and MEC Vadi can come in and speak on that. The plan for BRT. The plan for an integrated public transport, amongst other things that we have worked on, and, and I'm sure those of you who have heard, is that phase two, is it phase two or phase B? Phase two. Phase two of the BRT is also going to accommodate the university precincts, so that then the university precincts are accommodated over and above just the university precincts that will also include our health facilities. And here, Krisani Paraguanath is one. In Johannesburg, it will be Charlotte Matlake, Lillian Goyi, Jablani up there. All of them will be integrated. Universities along Auckland Park, 
in the in the in the city of uh, in, in in town in Johannesburg they will be included with Tuane now following after Johannesburg they will be much more better off in terms of their planning to integrate the 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 university communities as well as other precincts in Tuane from their first phase and already construction is happening along those areas so the, there is a concerted effort to say if we want to make sure that we create safe and secure, accessible sites for learning for our students, what do we do? And we have looked at the issues of accommodation because, yes, some of the things that are there that breed ills that happen within our, our university or student communities is because of uh, the unmanaged or uncontrolled access to accommodation and the issue of, uh, of reliable of reliable public transport. We are already in discussion with MEC Vadi, the municipalities, in ensuring that we create a single ticket system. Just to digress a bit, a week ago I met with uh, the leadership of the Congress of South African Students. And in their plans, because they visit different sites in Gauteng, they have negotiated with Gauteng that they must be given a student prize for the use of a how train. And interestingly, even their secretary is not using a car, President. He's actually getting into how train from home in, in, in Pretoria up to Johannesburg into the offices of Cossas. And then when he does his rounds around Johannesburg and Ekuruleni, he uses how train. And I think it is an innovation that has happened because they themselves saw a niche in this particular uh, uh, project and they have now seen it as one of their opportunities. And they say, no, 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 Mama, even as we move around, but even for our own learners who are moving now from Tswane to Johannesburg and stuff, we, we encouraging them to use how train. But we know that the cost for, for the fees for how train may be quite uh, difficult to be met by the student community. We have also said they must then go further and interact. And I would invite the leadership of students to say, come, let's talk about those issues. As we discuss the issue of a single ticket uh, for, 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 for public transport, because that's one thing that we are going to, to be working on to integrate the Riavaya with Metro Rail and how train. We will be interacting with the taxi industry because one of the things that we are quite clear of is that taxis are the ones that are being utilized more than the buses and trains and stuff. But they are not necessarily public transport because they are owned by individuals. So we are working with some of the associations that are beginning to say they want to be part of this process. And I'm sure MEC Vadi beyond today can come and interact with yourselves and share ideas so that then together with the, the two cities for now, Johannesburg and, and Tswane, you can also make your inputs around this single ticket and the benefits for, 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 for university, university students. But we do not want to interact with yourselves just as people who are at uh, university because there is a tomorrow. There is a tomorrow, and that tomorrow must be a tomorrow that brings hope. And hence, even when you are still at university, we must, in, we must guide you and advise you on what is best and what is good and what is required for the economy of this country. Because it does not help to do biblical studies. We've got too many popes and... We've got popes, we've got priests, we've got everybody and all these things. So I'm not saying it's not good to study biblical studies. But I'm saying, what I'm trying to emphasize is that find that that is relevant and is a catch as we grow this economy. The investment that President Jacob Zuma is talking about of what? Three trillion on, 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 on economic infrastructure. It's not about today. It's also about tomorrow. So prepare yourself so that you can become one of those who must be absorbed in terms of job opportunities in the work that government is doing. 
We have signed, as MEC Matlangu has indicated, we have signed the Youth Employment uh, Accord and we have already made commitments. There are big projects that we are involved in that seek to create jobs for our youth, including those who are graduates. And one of the things, President, that we also want to encourage is that you being a graduate must not also make you to resist riskily and being trained and orientated towards the skills that we need. So that then you do not only hold your degree as an entry into, into, into the business or into the employment uh, uh, area, but you must also have additional skills that you will know are needed or knowledge that is needed to grow our economy and to build sustainable communities. Like I'm saying, I never thought the issues of forensic social workers is an issue. But now I know that if we want to sort out the effectiveness of the criminal justice system, we need forensic social workers so that we are able to generate credible information and evidence when crimes are committed in the form of rape, in the form of strang strangling, and all these other funny crimes that are happening against women and children. So it is these things that we are looking at. We are reopening nursing colleges. We have reopened them. We are, we are, together with the National Department of Higher Education, we are working very strongly on the work that has to be done in the FETs. And uh, we do not also want to continue with this stigma that has been hanging around the uh, FETs, as if in those Abantu about University. We believe that the FETs are also quite crucial for, for, for our economy, but also for rolling out and implementing the skills, must, what, the skills master plan of the province, but also making sure that we've got a skilled population that can be directed towards making sure that Gauteng becomes the best amongst other provinces. The, the other thing that I want to, to, to share with yourselves is that um, sometimes it is correct for us to, be, to, 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 to discuss issues with, and, and be stuck on our views without testing them. That that you do not want must be substituted by what we believe is viable for the youth of our country. And that's why we're very committed in the youth placement programs. Two, we're very committed in ensuring that through MEC Kolisil, MEC Mashangu, MEC Vadi, we actually implement the agreements as they are contained in the Youth Employment Accord. You call it a wage subsidy, you call it whatever. Remember, there are thousands and thousands of our youngsters who are loitering in our communities who also need something and who want to have their dignity brought back to them and ensure that Nabo and, and that's one of the things that we are also interacting on. And hence what is contained in the National Development Plan. That the role of government is not just about protecting the employed. It is the primary responsibility of a developmental state to deal with unemployment, to deal with inequality, to deal with poverty. That's the primary responsibility of a developmental state. The means towards that can't be a contestation on us being able to realize our objective. And I'm saying it to those who are coming from the same home I'm coming from, the African National Congress. We can't be a stuck record and make other young people not to actually have an opportunity. Because finally now, the African National Congress and the people of South Africa, in fact, the African National Congress came after the adoption of the NDP. We only adopted the NDP in December. That must be the rallying point for everybody and each one of us, let us identify what our meaningful contribution is going to be.
in determining your future starting today. As the President had said that you can't wait for 2055 and that's what we agree. It must start now. And it can start now through us supporting you, through us dealing with the issues of uh, uh, the funding models and the bursaries and the opportunities that government has to provide. But it also has to be about us advising as to what is good for the future so that then you make the right choices. And, and this is part of the dialogue we are involved in in the province. As, take, as part of taking forward the National Development Plan, Gauteng is driving Gauteng Vision 2055. We're taking a view that we want Vision 2055 because we are a province that is hosting a site, a memorable site where the Freedom Charter was adopted. And we want our vision to coincide with the centenary of the Freedom Charter. And hence, Vision 2055. 20, we would want yourselves to make an input so that then we make constructive contributions not only today but moving forward. You contribute on what has been the situation from 1994 up to now 20 years down the line of our democratic right to vote. And how best then do we work together in ensuring therefore that as we get into the second phase of our own transition, we are able then to say, how do we deal with socio-economic transformation? So that then our own revolution can be complete. We need to be working together in those issues because you can't also be stuck and not think about your future. Because do you want to be a beneficiary of an RDP? Do you want to be a beneficiary of a child support grant? I don't believe that we want post the 20 years of our democracy to have a society that will be highly dependent again on social grants and not take advantage of the skills that are needed to change the economic direction of the country, of the continent and of the world. But we must also deal with the issues that we have raised, President, of safety and security. I heard MEC Maile asking the President, do you have a safety forum? Are you part of a CPF in this area? Do you know who's the station commissioner of Deep, is it Deep Proof? It will be Deep Proof here, no? Pinville or Deep Proof, one of the, yeah, Pinville, no? Yeah, PMV. That kind of a relay. How do we build relationships where we are? And I think that's one of the things that we can do. In our primary schools and, and, and senior secondary schools, we have the safety patrollers, we've got the adopt a cop program, and so on and so forth. How do we work together in ensuring, therefore, that we spread this kind of intervention? Now that we have had an agreement with the Minister of Higher Education that provinces must help him in terms of interacting and relating on social issues together with the university uh, uh, and, and institutions of higher learning uh, communities. So we, the, the sector policing here, we need to be saying, how does the management interact with the head of the sector police in this area? So that then you are also protected, you also make a meaningful contribution as to how we can deal with issues of safety and security for students. We must deal with the social ills, rape, domestic violence. We must deal with transsectional sex. And I'm saying this as a woman to other young girls here. As we deal with the issues of HIV and AIDS, we know in our province now, 84% of the people residing in Gauteng are now HIV free. <laughs> yes, yes, you were scared, eh? Honestly, and let me tell you where the trick lies. You know what, where the trick lies? The results actually, firstly, this, this report does not come from MEC PAP. This report comes from the South African Institute of Race Relations. It's not us. It also comes from census. But the good thing about it is that Government worked strongly in partnership with the youth over the past 19 years. That there was a lot of awareness. And most importantly, access to information was something that was intensified. 
and those who are positive, their own lifespan has increased because of access to treatment. Because Gauteng government has put more resources on that. But we have a, a bit of a challenge, Bo Ousinyan, that the, there's one age cohort that you must deal with of young women those who are between the age of 15 and 29. That's the age cohort that we must deal with. And I think as you deal with many other things in, the com in your community as students, you must also find explanations as to why is that situation happening amongst this age cohort. One day, I'm sure other MECs will come and explain, but part of it is around issues of transactional sex. Because this is one age cohort that can, cannot negotiate protection, because some of them have got a dependency on those who have the means. So how do we deal with that? It can't be a responsibility of government. It is about us, how we are socialized, how we as young women want to behave and manage our lives and so forth. And that's why government has also put additional resources on mentoring, on, on support for young women and so forth, because we must take that age cohort out of this trapping. But we must also talk to men who are between the age of 35 up to the age of 56. Yes, <laughs> must talk to them because these are the ones who are involved with these ones on transactional sex. The sugar daddy syndrome. Must deal with that. Must deal with it. And one of the things I was saying on Sunday in one meeting was that if you are young and you come from a family that cannot afford, just be proud of yourself. Love yourself. Your time will come. Don't limit your life by wanting to live a life that you cannot sustain. And those who have the money, in fact, that's one of the things, those who have the money in that age cohort of men, just stop it, don't do it. Because you may be doing it on my daughter, and somebody may be busy with your daughter. Just think about it. But the other thing that we must do, do is to respect one another as this student community. MEC Matangu was once a student activist, a youth activist, all of us sitting here. But there were never moments of Nomvula being raped by her male comrades. In fact, they were much more protective and jealous to an extent where you would not even have a boyfriend because they want to protect you. Yeah? <laughs> so that's part, those are some of the things that do not need the police, but they need us and how we relate to one another and ensuring that we give support to each other and we respect the right to say no. And when we say no, it must be no. And that's what is quite important. So th those social ills are things that we must also deal with. The issue of HIV and AIDS, we are winning the war against AIDS, but it does not mean we must lower the guard. On Sunday when I was in Tswane, I actually said, we're with the Deputy Minister of Health, that MEC Maile, we must congratulate young men who have painfully sustained the use of condom. Because the, the, it's not us, it's the Institute of Race Relation who are saying young men between the age of 15 and 35 are the ones who painfully keep the message of condomizing. And I think we must commend them. <laughs> that message in Houten must be communicated so that then we also give recognition to those who are responsible. And I think that's part of the, the work that government must deal with. 
As we are going to be interacting with yourselves, we will want to come and talk to you about the story of our 20 years of democracy. You may say it on the basis of your own experience, but share it with us on the basis of your experience of somebody's life that has improved, but also on the basis of your own life that has improved. We'll also be saying to you, tell us where you want to see our country. And that's the National Development Plan that is going to be driven through Gauteng Vision 2055. You are the future. You are the ones who must determine it. And you can't not want to be occupied about shaping the future of this country. And we can't also neglect the challenges that you are going through at this age and time. And hence some of the things that you are doing working together with yourselves. We've come now because we have now agreed and we have signed an agreement with the Minister of Higher Education that provinces can interact with institutions of higher learning. So some of the things that we have been doing on the periphery, we can now come in and engage with yourselves properly because we will not be invading somebody's territory. Thank you, Nyabong.